Lucky for you, I have tested out so, so many of the most viral, best-selling, top-rated beauty products out there. And the reason why that makes you lucky is because I have tested out so many things that have so much hype that I don't think are worth a purchase. So for any of you that are feeling a little bit tempted or persuaded to make a last-minute purchase on some of these items before the Sephora VIB sale ends, I'm gonna tell you which ones to skip and if you really want a replacement, what to buy instead, but obviously you could just skip everything altogether if you're really looking to save some extra money. So we're gonna jump into this video, but not before I give a really quick shout out to Kelly Gooch because she posted this video already and that definitely inspired me to do one of my own. I really enjoy these pass or purchase kind of videos and I haven't posted one in a while, so I was like, hey, great idea, let's do one for the sale. So I'll make sure to list her video in my description box below so that you can check that out, but without further ado, here is my version of what to pass on and what to purchase just instead from the VIB sale. Let's start off with makeup. So the first thing that I would recommend passing on is the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tint. It's not that I think this is a bad product because I definitely don't. They have a few different shades that are all really pretty, just like bright pops of color. I love that this is super lightweight. It feels cooling, it's refreshing. But because of the way that this is packaged in this like fat, chubby, balm style packaging. I find it a little bit tricky to get nice even pigment application because when I'm trying to like get the perfect amount of color, that then usually ends up causing me to have certain areas that are a bit more saturated with pigment than others. And I don't know, there's just something about this that does make it a little bit trickier for me, even though when it looks nice, it definitely looks nice. And I think I especially noticed that maybe more than I normally would with a product because I'm actually working on a lip stain showdown as we speak. So I have so so many other lip stains that I don't have that issue with, including this one, which is my recommendation from Sephora. It's the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oil. I don't think this is a lip oil. I think it's just like a jelly lip stain. It feels really nice when you first apply it, but definitely is not lip oil-like. So if you purchase it with those expectations, you will be disappointed. If not, you will really love it. My favorite shade is the shade Wonder. It's a really nice, warm, bright pink that's not like too intense, but Oh, just gives you a really fun pop of pink on the lips. While we're talking about lip oils, let's jump over to the lip oil that I would recommend passing on, and that is the Dior lip oil. This is definitely one of the most hyped up lip oils ever. People love this product, and I can understand why. It's definitely nice. However, for the price, I just feel like there are options that are even better, that feel nicer on the lips, that last longer, that give me glassier shine, and that also do not have any minty cooling sensation. You guys know that I love my Amiga Lay Lip Oil in the shade Reflection. It is a completely clear lip oil. It's thick, it's cushy, it gives me that glass-like shine. I seriously am obsessed with this, but I haven't been able to found, been able to found? Seriously? <laughs> I haven't been able to find a color that I feel is like really flattering for my complexion. They do have a few different shades that are beautiful, they just don't quite work out for me. So if you have had that same issue with Amico Lay and you want a lip oil that has a little bit of color, I would definitely check out In Beauty Project. They have several that are really pretty, nice sheer wash of color, not too overly pigmented, but also give you that nice comfortable feel and really glossy effect. Sephora now has 10 different shades of this lip oil on their website, that's exciting because I used to not have a ton. This one is probably my number one favorite. It is the Glaze Number no. 8 Mystery Glaze Lip Oil. It's a really pretty, super sheer bright pink. And I am just now realizing that this is actually one of those pH adjusting lip products. So they say it's gonna give you a customized glossy pink tint for everybody it ends up being this bright pink, but the reason why I love it so much is because it's super sheer, so it's not too intense. I feel like so many of those pH adjusting products just end up looking very, very bold on my lips, and I don't love that. I feel like you can't even, oh, there you go. You can kind of see that pink. Oh, it's just like beautiful in this formula. But if you're not into that, they again have nine other shades to choose from on Sephora's site, so I'm sure you'll find something you love. Next is a mascara that I was very excited to try. I had high hopes for and was colossally disappointed. It is the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow Mascara, and I guess I was wowed by it, but not in a good way. I was wowed by how awful it was. This mascara was a true disaster for me through and through. It was too wet, it was too 
too clumpy. It gave me a spidery looking result. It ended up smudging and transferring onto my lid and then it completely disappeared by the end of the day. So, I mean, kind of a good thing because I hated the way it looked, but it had no lasting power. Just so, 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 so bad for me, which is weird because I feel like I've seen some people say that that's their favorite mascara and it works so well for them. So I'm like, I don't know why my lashes like rejected it, but it just did not work for me. If you're looking for a mascara that has that like extra long wow effect, I think that Benefit Fan Fest is fantastic. This I believe is their newest mascara launch and it just has a pretty straightforward wand in the sense that it has, you know, traditional soft bristles, a slight curve, but it just gives me really beautiful long lashes and like a tiny bit of the spideriness in the sense that they're so long, but not in the way of the Huda Beauty mascara at all. I've really been loving this. I have been layering it a lot with other mascaras. So my top favorite mascara from Sephora is Tower 28 Make Waves. I'm actually wearing both of these on my lashes today because I'm a layering kind of girl with mascara, but either one of these, so, so much better than the Huda Mascara. Another makeup product that I was really disappointed by is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Concealer. That launched like at the end of last summer, I believe, and I was really excited about it because they made it seem like it was gonna be a very skin-like concealer. I did not have that experience. Well, I guess at first I kind of did because upon initial application, I did think that it looked really beautiful. It's the wear that I had an issue with. As time went on, it started to make my under eye area look dry and cling to patches. And I never have issues like that with concealer. I couldn't tell you the last time I tried a concealer that I felt made my under eye area look really dry. So unfortunately that one just didn't work out for me. My favorite concealer that also happens to be the most skin-like concealer I've ever tried is the House Labs Concealer. I shared this with you guys. I mean, I've shared it so many times, but I know I did just talk about this in my Sephora VIB recommendations video. I think that's actually been the case with a couple of these. What can I say? I like what I like. But I think if you are interested in a concealer that gives you that skin-like effect, there's just nothing like House Labs. The last makeup product that I would recommend passing on is one that I hated so much. I think this is the worst foundation I've tried since I can remember. Like I cannot remember the last time I hated a foundation as much as I hated this one within the last three, four, maybe even five years, which confused me so much because it blew up on social media. Oh my God, like this went so, so, so viral. Everybody was raving about it. So I had such high hopes for it. No, it's the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Waterproof Foundation. I felt like I was putting a facial oil when I applied this, like, Ugh. And my skin definitely does lean oily. So I just don't love the feeling of any sort of oil on my face since my face already produces enough of that, but still like, ugh. But even if I was able to get past that, I thought it looked horrible on my skin. So that one was the biggest fail for me ever. Again, I'm obsessed with my House Labs foundation. This is beautiful. Definitely my top recommendation from Sephora, but honestly, like most things from the drugstore would do way better than that Laura Mercier foundation in my opinion. And I know that's gonna be a hot take because so many people love that, but good Lord, I did not. I would go for the Maybelline or L'Oreal skin tints any day before I reach for that Laura Mercier foundation. Oh my God, any day. Moving on to skincare next, a sunscreen that I would recommend skipping is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen. I reviewed this in a video that I posted last summer where I tested out a bunch of new sunscreens. So I will list that in the description box below if you would like to see the texture, how it applies, the finish. But there were a few things I did not love about this. The first being that I felt like it just never fully dried down on my skin. It just stayed feeling kind of wet and I just don't love that in a sunscreen. But the bigger issue that I had is that it stung my eyes so badly. My eyes were on fire. A sunscreen that does not burn my eyes at all, but also has a really nice, beautiful glow and a glow that I actually prefer is the Kosas Stream Beam Comfy Smooth Sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 40, but it doesn't have chemical filters in it, which are known to cause that eye irritation. And I will show you guys a swatch of this. The reason why I prefer this tint is because I feel like it's just a little bit more subtle than the glow recipe sunscreen. I mean, you still get that really gorgeous, almost like filtery glow, but I don't know. I felt like the glow recipe one was maybe just a bit too much for my personal preference. Similarly, Super Goop Glow Screen. I have to give them credit because they were like the first sunscreen to do this in a major way. But if you have never tried this, I'll show you. The glow is intense. What just happened to my voice? 
I feel like this is not even doing it justice because it looks beautiful right there. But when I apply this all over my face, it's like Tin Man, Tin Man vibes. I actually prefer the new In Beauty Project Mineral Sun Glow. I think that this is stunning. I just showed it to you in my Sephora haul. I received this in PR. Let's see if this captures. Okay, yeah, I feel like you can see this now. This looks like a liquid highlight versus In Beauty Project, which is down here and definitely still gives you that glow. Like it's not a super subtle glow by any means, but it's not nearly as intense as something like Super Goop, which again, I think this looks like a liquid highlight when it dries down. Super Goop Go Screen. <sighs> super Goop Go Screen. I gotta wrap this up. Super Goop Glow Screen takes it a bit too far for my personal preference, whereas In Beauty Project is like a lot, but not too much. And they also do have this in a deeper option if this is too fair for you. Next is a lip balm that I really just purchased because of the smell. It is the Sol de Janeiro lip balm. It has a really delicious sugar cookie-like scent, and I love you guys know, I love fragrances like that. I love it in perfume. I love it in body products. I love it on my lips. It's just the best. But what's not the best is that lip balm. It quite literally does nothing for my lips. It wasn't conditioning. It wasn't nourishing. If anything, I feel like my lips ended up feeling drier after I used it because of the fact that it did nothing for me. So if you are on the hunt for a lip balm that smells really good, like vanilla, but actually feels amazing on your lips, I got it. Laneige came out with their Lip Glowy Balm in vanilla, and when I saw that this launched, I bought four. I am obsessed with these lip balms. They feel so luxurious. They give you really beautiful shine, and now we have a nice, beautiful vanilla smell as well. Oh my God, I just love it. Okay, last for skin is self-tan, so like not really skincare, but a product you apply to your skin. I will say Sephora's kind of lacking in their self-tan products. They only have a few brands, and then for those brands, they do carry a bunch of different products, but I would expect them to have more, like, I don't know, the next up and coming in self-tan. But if you are interested in purchasing self-tanning products before the sale ends, I would skip tan looks. I just never had a great experience with their products. I felt like they ended up looking really orange on me. I feel like I would get kind of splotchy, uneven results. The tan didn't last as long as me as other tans. Like there just are so many other better options, especially considering the higher price point. So while Sephora doesn't carry any of my favorite self tanners, if I had to recommend one for those of you that really wanna buy one at a discount, I would go for this one from Isle of Paradise. It's their Express Ultra Dark Self Tanning Mousse. I think that this is really, really good. I did include it, of course, in one of my self tan showdowns. So I will list that in the description box below. Really good. Again, not one of my all-time favorites. There are others that I think are darker if you want like a hyper ultra dark self tan. Cause again, this is supposed to be ultra dark and I feel like I have tried others that are like actually ultra dark. But again, it's very pretty and just like across all of the categories that I rank self tanners on, it performed really well. So that's what I'd go for. All right, let's wrap up with hair care. First up is Way's new hair gloss. This is something that really surprised me because it just felt like any other conditioner and it really did nothing for my hair. It didn't make it shinier. It definitely didn't make it look glossy. And if anything, I feel like it didn't even do a great job of conditioning. So if you're looking for an in-shower gloss product that actually does deliver nice shine, I had way better results with Amika The Flash, their instant shine mask. I really enjoy that. It's been a minute since I've used it, but that definitely gave me really nice shine. Or if you don't care what kind of hair product it is, but you just want something to give you a super glossy result, Color Wow Dream Co. honestly can't be beat. The difference between something like this and the way gloss, like no question. Another glossing product that was a total flop for me is actually also from Color Wow. It's their Pop and Lock Frizz Control and Glossing Serum. This is such a bizarre product. I wish I had it to show you guys right now, but it has like glitter in it. So that's obviously how they intend for you to get that glossy look. For me, it didn't translate on my hair. It kind of was one of those that just like absorbed and did nothing. So I would choose Dream Coat over that product any day. I just, I don't even know why they have that because it's supposed to be for frizz and glossing, which is exactly what Dream Coat is for. And Dream Coat is like a million times better. Or if you want to go a different route and you want some sort of like leave-in that you rub throughout your hair, I would just go for a hair oil. You get such a nicer result with something like the Bumble and Bumble Invisible Oil than that serum. Like this is going to give you that gloss. It does help with frizz because of the fact that it's an oil and it tames. Way better in my book. The K18 Conditioner, unfortunately, just wasn't what I was hoping it would be. It certainly wasn't 
wasn't a bad conditioner, but it just wasn't what I was hoping given that it's from K18, which is a brand that I just expect to have really incredible products. I don't know. I feel like I have high expectations for them across the board because of the type of brand that they are and how they position themselves as like an innovative brand that comes out with products that are supposed to be game changing in that category or like disruptive to the category. And I just didn't feel that way about the conditioner at all. I would go for any of the conditioners that I've recommended to you guys before, Pureology Strength Cure, Amika the Cure, or a Bay Gold Lust, like any of these that you can get from Sephora. I think they're so, so much better. They give you that amazing, silky, extra conditioned feel. So good, worth the price, regardless of what price point you're interested in, much more than K18. Oh man. <laughs> Fast follow another from K18, their new air wash launch that I told you guys I was gonna purchase. But the day I walked out of my house, not even the day, the exact second I walked out of my house to run to Sephora to see if they had this in stock yet, it was sitting in PR on my doorstep. That never happens. And I'm very glad that that happened and I was able to test this out before the sale ends so I can tell you, Stop, don't buy it. Or maybe you'll want to. Let me explain. What I love about this is that it is very weightless, especially compared to other dry shampoos. You're not gonna have any of that traditional dry shampoo feel in your hair. It's not something that feels super powdery. It's not gritty. It's not just gunky like a lot of dry shampoos can be. It doesn't feel heavy. So all of those things are great. I love the smell of it. I love the fact that this has that odor binding technology. I think that you know, both of those things are really nice, but unfortunately this does end up leaving a bit of a cast in my hair. At first I can actually see white and like spots of white, which I just was really confused by because one of the main selling points of this product is that it's not supposed to leave any cast at all. So it definitely does have a white cast, but even after blow drying my roots, when I looked back at footage, I noticed that there still was like a grayish hue. And I am trying to avoid any sort of gray hue because my hair naturally is very cool toned. I don't know if you can see my roots starting to come through and I just don't like the look of that So I try to keep this area much warmer than what I naturally have So anything that like reverts back to my extra cool tonedness i'm like, uh So I certainly don't think this is bad and there are a lot of pros to this product But I think just given the fact that it's 48 dollars for four ounces of product like I expect you to not have any cast at all at that price point for that amount. So I'll leave that one up to you guys, of course, as with everything here, it's not like I can force you to do anything, but if you were interested in purchasing that and now you're like, well crap, now I don't want to, but I still want a really good dry shampoo. I would go for either of these Amiga Perk Up Plus Extended Clean or Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean. Last to wrap up this video is a hair mask that I was like obsessed with trying for a really long time. I don't know why. I remember several years ago, well, maybe not several, maybe that's dramatic. Or maybe not. I feel like I have a memory of myself sitting in the apartment where my bed was behind me when I used to film there. That was the first spot I ever filmed in. I feel like I remember it launching then and I remember looking at it on my computer and being like, oh, I really wanna buy it, I really wanna try it, but it's $75 and I never did. And I'm glad I did not spend $75 on that because it is not worth it. It is the Kerastase chronologist hair mask. Honestly, I think I just was obsessed with the fact that it had black, really luxe looking packaging and the packaging is beautiful, but I could not get past the smell of it. It's very masculine, like it's good. It smells like cologne, but it's very intense. And like, I don't want to have hair that smells like cologne so much so that I'm constantly smelling it and like can't get that smell out of my nose. You guys know me, I'm a gourmand girl. I love sweets, I love baked goods, I love vanilla, I love cake, I love cookies. I'd much rather my hair smell like that than men's cologne. Wait, did my mom just send me this and say she loved it? Cause I actually feel like I gave it to her when I didn't like it. Okay, I don't know. I can't find the picture that I'm talking about. She may really enjoy it. And it's not like it's bad, like it felt nice, but I think for $75, I expected it to make my hair feel better than it did, more like Oribe Gold Lust. Like if you're wanting to splurge and spend on something that feels luxe, looks luxe, smells luxe, I'd go with Aura Bay Gold Lust over that Kerastase range for sure. That's just my personal preference. All right, guys, we are going to wrap up this video here. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What do you agree with? What do you not agree with? Did you have the same experience or a different experience with anything? Are you gonna pick up anything from the sale last minute before it ends? Let me know, we'll chat there. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more from me, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thanks for your support in doing this. 
those things, it truly helps me. So it truly means so, so much. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.